Well, welcome back. We've been off for a couple of weeks, and that's why we haven't been posting too much. Been away, bit of relaxation. We're back, we're gonna smash some work out. So, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. Me and Barney have been talking about processes, ways to do things, etc. Uh, we've been on the Mechanic Mindset course. He's got something called, what's it called? Fixed it. Fixed it. And that gives you a logical approach to how to tackle these jobs. Um, so Barney's looking at that. We're going to run through. We're going to try and set some more procedures in place, especially for Barney who is learning. And there's so many different ways. I've done so many different jobs. I can sort of jump ahead. But yeah, it'll be handy if we can just get these procedures in place. So go check out Mechanic Mindset. His stuff is very, very good. But what I've got today is Mark 7 Transit. It's coming in with a reverse light fault and a number plate light fault. So I'm going to show you how we would normally test this. It's going to be slightly different for the standard garage, what get it in just for a customer coming in saying they've got a number plate light fault or it's coming from an MOT, you've seen the number plate light is out. That is where you'd normally just go straight to the bulb. It's in for a service. You've seen a bulb out, you check it, it's the bulb, blah, 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 blah. If after that point you've fitted a bulb in it and it didn't work, that's the point where we pick up the, the sort of job. The customer comes down to us, it's been for a service, they've checked it out, said it's electrical, or you've got it back in after you've done your service and said to the customer, it needs investigation. This is the point we're going to start from now. So we're not going to check the bulbs. This one, I'm sure would have had the bulbs checked. I might be wrong, but what's the chances of the customer having a couple of bulbs gone and thinking, I know what I need to go. I need to go straight to an auto electrician who's fairly expensive and check it there. I'm sure he would have either checked it himself or he's been to a garage they've recommended us. So that's where we're going to start from. I'm going to show you the process of what we do when we get a job in like this. Enjoy. So first thing we normally do, we've got to evaluate the job and the car. So is it like a BMW or a Mini, if it sees a short circuit in one of the systems, that if it sees it too many times, it actually logs a code in there for short circuit detection and you have to have that cleared before it will come back on. Uh, the later transit, see if they have a bulb blown or something, you have to go in, reset it, tell it's had a new bulb, etc. Uh, BSIs on, on Peugeot's, they will transistorize. So if it sees a short circuit or anything like that, it turns it off. Or is it just a basic system with lives, earths, wires, switches, relays, etc. So depends which way you're going to go you know so before you go ahead and start stripping everything out and scanning it and doing all that try and evaluate what sort of system it's got so we're going to look it up in the diagram show you how this system works and we're going to make a plan on how we're going to test this car so let's have a look it's at that not got all over lights i don't think right we have checked it side lights are all working number plate lights aren't so it's uh, probably just a break in the door sort of door loom where the doors open up but checking on this, these are reverse lamps. So this one comes along, it's hard to find it, but it goes all the way along here. Let's have a look. Up into plug B16, it actually goes up to its own relay. So this relay is gonna be, let's just show you that. So this relay is controlled by body control module. It's controlled by body control module, although the switch is going to turn the body control module then to turn the relay on. But before we go into that side of it, that's with a movable relay. We could go there, we've got four points to check. Have we got the power into it, both sides? Have we got a earth path down to the bulbs? Or is it the body control not turning that relay on? Too many people would scan it, see what this says before they do any of the basic checks. Right, let's have a look at the reverse light. Right, now reverse light is the one underneath, two reverse lights, might only have one in there. That one comes along, number three, all the way along. Up here, goes into plug B15, funny enough. <clears throat> so if we go to that plug, we're gonna be able to test both outputs to see whether we got earth path. It goes into plug B for 15, comes back out of plug 14, and heads down to the switch. The switch is then powered by a fuse in another fuse box. So let's just show you that again. 
So start from the other way. This is the fuse, comes down. Down to a reverse light switch, so we could check there, see what's going on. Then up into plug 14, B14, links internally. So it's going to tell the body control what's going on, but the actual power just goes in, out and down. Down this wire, all the way along to the bulbs. So obviously a logical place to start, which we're going to get three readings from straight away, is this body control module. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fuse box type control unit, but yeah, they call it body control module. If we go to plug B, 16, 14, 15 and 16, we're going to eliminate a lot of things. Are we looking at that side of the car, this side of the car? Is the switch not switching on? We're we not getting power from there. Is the relay turning on? You know, so, so let's strip the glove box out, get to that control module, find out what plug it is. We'll go straight to there. No point in doing anything else. So we have an open bonnet of the car, plugged in the diagnostic tools. We're just looking at all the information we've got before we even get any tools out. Now we know what we're expecting to see. Now's the time we can go and start testing it. So let's have a look. Okay, well, we've located that plug in the control module. I'll just show you where it is. So there's this brown plug here. With it out. It shows you the pin numbers on the board. They're quite hard to see, but it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we've got 13, 14, 15, and 16. So we've double checked the pin numbers against the wire we've got up there. What is it? 14, 15, and 16. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to use our back probe pins. We're going to stick them in the plugs up in the wiring we know we need to test so at the moment we've got the orange and gray that one goes in there and then we've got the one above it green and orange then we've got the one above it which is violet and gray so let's get a test light on it let's see what we got again we know what we're meant to have let's just go and double check what we're meant to have. So we know on um, the grey and orange, that comes from the switch with the ignition on in reverse, we should have power in. If we have, is it giving power out? Have we got a broken wire between the two? And then we're gonna turn the lights on, see if we've got power out from this relay down to there. If not, then we can work our way back. Have we lost feed from the switch? Is it the switch? Is it the relay? Is it the power to the uh, relay? So yeah, three different tests, then we'll come back so let's get that done now and then we'll have another look at this see where we're going next right so we've got our three pins set up 14 15 and 16. so we've got just ignition on we've got an earth path on 14 earth path on 15 and no earth path on 16. all right let's double check that Right, there we go. Right, let's go show you what that means. Earth path on 14 is good. Earth path on 15 is good, which would be okay because they're linked together anyway. Whatever happens, they're linked together. So one reading's always going to be the same as the other one. Doesn't rule out the switch. Doesn't rule out the live because we haven't turned them on yet. So pin 16, no earth path. Let's show you what I mean by no earth path. So people moan when they call this ground or earth, but you know, depends what you've been brought up with. But this is your ground path earth path comes up to your bulb goes through the element of a bulb which is literally a curled up wire but it's still a wire so up through the bulb one wire all the way down to here then up to the pin what we was testing on if this bulb's good and this earth is good we will get an earth path or it's shown as an earth on there but that is open line but that can be anywhere all it means is it either we've lost one earth both bulbs or the one wire that goes back down to the body control module. We know that something's possibly wrong there. Now we need to check the outputs. So we need to put it in reverse and we need to put the lights on, see if it's given any outputs on these. If we've got output on these two pins, 14 and 15, that eliminates the fuse to the switch. It eliminates the switch 
and in and out of the body control and then we know that it's just going down to the bulb and if we turn the side lights on and we get a power out of there we know again between pin 16 and the earth point at the back there's going to be open circuit whether that's the bulbs a broken wire the earth side of it we don't know so we need to move back if you're testing it just write this down what you've got with ignition on before you've done anything and then you can write it down put it in reverse see what you got and go from there so so let's go check it let's do one at a time and i'll show you what we got so what we're checking is 14 and 15 we've got our earth path so now i'm going to put it in reverse Right, now we've got power. And it is going out. So it's coming in from the switch into body control. Link through, comes back out. But we've got no light, no bulbs on it at the back. So that's the next thing we need to check is, are we receiving this voltage to the bulb? Let's go and turn the side lights on. Check number 16. So we've got 14 and 15, they're reverse lights. Number 16, that's the one to the number plate lights, I'll go and flick the lights on. Right, see if we've got power out from that. There we go, we have got power to that as well. Right, so there we go, we've got all the lives from there. So, again, it might just be bulbs. I'd be very surprised, but it could just be bulbs. But do we start at the back? Do you work from one end of the circuit right the way forward? Should we have started at the bulbs and work all the way down to here? Should we have started at the switch? You know, the, the power's into the switches, the fuse into the switches, through the switch, into body control, work our way all the way back down. Which way do you start it? So it's ideal, if you can, spend a little bit of time before you go to the vehicle and work out if there is a nice test point you can get to to eliminate quite a few things. So starting here, people might say, oh, if you'd started at the bulbs, if it is just bulbs, but like I say, this is one, if you've checked the bulbs, you know it's not the bulbs and you want to go a bit further, this is the way I do it. So going here is halfway. We know now it's not any of this side of it. It's not a side light switch. It's not a reverse light switch. It's not the power to it. It's not the fuse. It's not the relay. All that lot's working. So we've eliminated all that lot through testing at this point. Now we will go back to the back, see what we've got, and then we'll work our way to the middle to find out where the fault is. Could be bulbs. So let's go back there, see what voltages we've got, and then we'll work out a plan from then on. So... I thought I'd give it a quick strip out, open up the back doors, is camper converted, it's got panelling in and stuff, it's going to be hard to get to the wiring, but luckily they have left enough room to get to the, uh, get to the securing nuts to get the, the lamps out, so I can get the lamps out, I can do a check there, the problem will be is if we need to get to any of this wiring and to the panel down there. <sighs> so, but it is what it is, this job's about how we do our testing procedures not about how we're going to fix it but let's get in let's strip the lamps out but this is again what you're coming across decide your jobs check your jobs through see what's going on so right let's get it done right so we've taken the back panel off of the number plate lights we've already found we've got a broken wire off of this lamp if i just touch it on there it's glowing up that's okay, so we know we've got power back here. It's not broken in the flex of the door, which is lucky. And the other side, we have power on one wire. And a ground on the other. So, well, I've got, I'm sure it's just going to be a bulb in that one. So, so, that should be quite an easy one. New terminal on there and a new bulb. Now, we've just got to check the reverse lights, see what they're doing. Um, so, we'll managed to get them stripped out so we managed to get the cluster out so we're just going to check on to the reverse light bulb i'm going to put it in reverse now check what voltage we got <laughs> what you can hear reverse sensors are working that means that we're definitely getting power up to the reverse kit or i might be a genuine one so that could come from body control um right so we've got an earth path to that bulb and we've got voltage in so it's just going to be the bulb just quickly flick that over <laughs> there we go i'll put a new bulb in that all right let's just make sure that's the right one 
off and back on. Right, so I'm going to repair the wiring on there, stick a bulb in it, put a new bulb in this one, get it all back together, get the glove box back in it, and I'll give you some final thoughts once it's all back together. So, see you in a minute. Right, new section on the videos. At the end of each video, we're going to go back to some comments on the last couple of videos and give you some sort of replies. I'm struggling to keep up with all the comments and reply to everyone and stuff, so you might have seen that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose a couple, go through them, and reply to the comments on it. So, what we've got is on the Ford Focus, uh, the one where we've done the ECU repair and stuff. Um, first thing, we started the video off with the old, this is what we're going to be doing, this is what you're going to be seeing, we're going to be using this tool, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. It's a new element. So, so that was the video. So Keith Dib one commented, great videos. However, I'm not American. I do not need to be told at the start what I'm about to see. Sort of fair comment. English and Americans are obviously, we're, we're all different. We, we like, you know, I, I try not to get it too Americanized, but we've only got a certain amount of people that watch our videos in the UK. At night, as soon as my videos go out, they go about seven o'clock, get to about 11 o'clock, all the views drop off. YouTube then think it's a rubbish video. So they stop putting it out to other people. If I can get some other people to start watching when the English people start dropping away or the UK people start dropping away, um, one of my best videos was a BMW M3. That one just went up and it must have got picked up by Germans, French, etc. And it just carried on going and going and going and then it went on for days. So that's the reason why we are doing a little bit more at the beginning of it and telling people what's going on just because we need to try and build a slightly different audience. So, you know, if it's not for you, it's, it's, it's 10 seconds of waffle and, you know, I'll put a bit of effort into it, make it a bit flashy and all that sort of stuff. We're not going over the top going, hey guys, this is what we're going to see. You know, we're just doing that. So that's the reason for that. Right. What's the next one? Gemma Conway, 7074. Nice work. Did you repair the ECU plugs or just secure them? So that was on the Ford Focus. The ECU plugs that they've been mucked about with before. We thought the engine had been taken out or something. They were securing clips to hold the, the plugs onto the ECU. So all that is, is they've got, they've got two slides which secure the plug. And then it's got two levers which allow them slides to be pulled out dead broken so we had to wiggle it all out so we just literally done it push it back in push the slides back in so they just secure it again the next person was going to be testing that you know they'll, they'll know what to do they're made made for speed when they're manufacturing it they plug it in clip it around it's done so yeah it didn't need any sort of new repair or anything like that on it so yeah we didn't put new clips on it because it didn't need it because the main securing slides were actually all intact and fine so yeah Thanks very much for your comments. So this is a new section we're going to add in. If you've got any comments, if you've got any questions, anything you'd like to know about RMS or about the job we've just done, let us know in the comments and we'll answer them next time and hopefully give you a shout out. So see you then. So there we go, another one done. So this one was more about the processes, not about this job. Um, it was a fairly basic fault. Um, we could have started one end, could have started the other. Everyone said, why don't you just start the bulbs? Why don't you check the fuses first? You know, but especially on a reverse light, nine times out of 10, it's going to be the switch, you know, because that is the main mechanical moving part. So whichever way you start, it's always going to be the other end. But don't beat yourself up about it. If you've got a process in place and you followed it for a reason, so you started in the middle, you thought, right, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll know, how can you go wrong? You know, so... You can't beat yourself up about it. You can't have somebody telling you you're wrong or anything like that. So yeah, that's another one done. So if you can drop a like down below, it really does help the videos out. Really do appreciate it. Subscribe if you like this type of content and we'll see you on the next one. Some people have been saying, you know, I waffle too much. I don't know. Sometimes I do a job and people go, oh, I wish you'd show me this, wish you'd show me that. And then you get the other people, oh, that had been done in two minutes, put a couple of bulbs in it, it'd have been done. But then there's no video. You know, it will be, yeah, got to transit in. Fit two bulbs, thanks for watching. You know, so again, if you take something from this video, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Ta-da!